This demonstration is for the purpose of installing Hall Effect local strain instrumentation onto a triaxial soil specimen. Required items. A Hall Effect local strain set. Here we will be demonstrating a full 50mm set. It is important to check that the serial number of the Hall Effect chip matches that of the magnet as this is the pairing that was used for calibration. All purpose contact adhesive or silicon sealant. If pins are to be used, we locate the devices with silicon sealant. In this demonstration, we have a very stiff sample, therefore we will be using the contact adhesive to locate the transducers. A felt pen or soft marking pen to mark the membrane. A small screwdriver. A ruler, preferably a short one some elastic bands, a sharp knife and a completed triaxial specimen ready for instrumentation. The Hall Effect transducers are threaded through the access ring insert for your triaxial cell. Specially made inserts allow for easy insertion and removal of the chips. The bulkhead gland should be tightened ensuring a watertight seal. A cable sealing gland allows the length of the cable to be adjusted. Make sure this is tightened before use. The insert is then placed into the transducer access ring. This will be located and tightened with a large washer and nut. Now we will attach the radial transducer to the sample. First we mark vertical lines diametrically opposite on the specimen with the pen. Next we mark the centre of the specimen horizontally and as close to the centre as possible. From this centre line mark a line for the top of the radial pad. This will help location significantly. To enable us to mark the position of the axial pads, we must first set the gauge length to the desired length. The gauge length may be adjusted to suit your requirements from close to one third of the sample height to two thirds of the sample height by rotating the magnet foot. Once we have established the gauge length, we can mark the position of the vertical pads. Now on the radial caliper, we make sure all of the screws are loose, ready to accept the chip, and pins are in place if we are using pins. We always place the radial caliper first as this goes inside the axial devices. We have the magnet arm in place on the radial caliper before mounting. We hold the radial caliper by the two hinge tabs. This holds the caliper at the maximum diameter. This open diameter may be increased by adjusting the screws next to the hinge. Now we would place the contact glue, not super glue or any resin base adhesive as this will damage the pads and cause the pins to jam. We place the glue on the membrane first and then on the caliper pads.
We will wait a few minutes for the glue to become tacky as per the glue manufacturer's recommendations. And then carefully place the radial caliper on the sample, making sure the caliper is as horizontal as possible. And we of course line the pads up with the vertical lines we have already drawn on the specimen. We will then very carefully hold this in position until the glue is dry. This may take a few minutes. If we were using pins, we would now push them in very carefully into the sample. Of course, we would have located the transducers with silicon sealant rather than contact glue at this point. The silicon sealant would then seal around the small punctures in the membrane. Now, we will attach the axial transducers to the sample. Axial transducers are fixed to the test specimen so that the magnet arm hangs downwards like a pendulum with the magnet at the lowest point. The axial strain transducers will be positioned vertically and fixed on opposite sides of the test specimen such that they cover the middle section of the test specimen, usually between one third and two thirds of the specimen height. They are placed over the radial mounting blocks to give maximum clearance along the drawn vertical line. The lower blocks will be first into position. Again, make sure the screws are loose and the chip easily slides in and out. This will enable easier insertion once they are in place on the specimen. Again, glue should be placed on the membrane over the marked areas for the axial transducers and of course also on the pads. Again, we wait until the glue is slightly tacky, possibly for a few minutes, and then hold each block in position until dry. An elastic band carefully placed over the lower mounting blocks can help to hold the block in place while the glue dries and we place the axial arms and chips. Next, we place the magnet arms on the specimen, again by placing glue on the axial pads and the membrane. Again, this will have to be held in place for a few minutes until it's dry. Now that the glue is dry, we can remove the elastic bands. Note how we used another elastic band to hold the magnet arm in position. Now we can insert the chips and tighten the screws very carefully. We only want to tighten the screws pinched tight as we will be moving the chips again in a moment. Now, while we are reading the output from the chips, either on our data logger or PC, we should move the chips relative to their magnets to the so-called zero gauss position, where the voltage will be zero. At this position, we will be confident that the full plus or minus three millimeter range will be achieved. Now they are tightened fully to hold them in position. Measuring the gauge length of the axial calipers in position 
between the centers of the pads is extremely important as this measurement will be used in the final calculation of specimen axial strain. Remember also that the 2 to 1 ratio between the radial caliper pads and the radial transducer will mean that the measured displacement at the transducer will actually be equal to twice the diameter change.